Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Here I will go over five different nations in Imperator Rome. They will be relatively small nations, but in my opinion they could offer an inter interesting start and challenge. I will steer clear of the usual suspects and offer different insight for each of the countries on this list. Imperator Rome has some powerful countries to choose from, and unfortunately many of the minor nations are somewhat bland and boring. However, I picked five oddballs that could prove to be interesting to play. At least I found it entertaining when I tried them. So without further ado... Icenia or Ikenia. I'm not really sure which one is the correct one. But Icenia is a relatively small tribe in the southeastern parts of Britain or Albion. They are not that special compared to their neighbors except they have their own heritage which gives them a 5% extra national taxes and 5% extra country civilization level. However, the malice of playing it, uh, the malice uh, within the heritage is that they have a minus 10% improved opinion maximum, which ain't that bad. Um, her heritages are somewhat meh, they don't really do much, and I hope Paradox at some point expands a bit more on them. Now, Icenia is a tribe, obviously, and one of their main goals is, in my opinion, is to try and form either Albion or Britannia, or maybe even both. Of course, you need you would need to uh, take control over uh, the whole island, or at least part, uh, most of it, to be able to form these uh, formidable uh, nations. Uh, one thing you should start off with by pl when playing them is to try and get some kind of alliance with two or three other tribes nearby. Always keep in mind to keep some kind of avenue open for expansion, so you don't encase yourself with uh, allies, so you don't have anywhere to expand. And then uh, use the system, of course, of having uh, an alliance or two, and pull in your friends to uh, your wars uh, as fast as possible. And then, of course, later, down the line, break that alliance and attack your former allies, so you can expand even more. Uh, once you have taken control over uh, the island of uh, Brittany, then you can either expand into Gaul. You have to be wary of the Romans if they expand into Gaul. Uh, but truth be told, it's not often I've seen the, AI, uh, the Roman AI expand into Gaul that much. Uh, but hey, it could happen. And of course you can also do a reverse thing law where you attack Scandinavia, uh, the Scandinavian tribes over there, and expand into that area instead. It's up to you, really, um, but of course the main objective here is to unite the island under your rule and um, set forth and bring Celtic rule to your neighbors. Yeah, so I guess that's the Icenia nation, and uh, let's move on. The Bosporan Kingdom. Now, the Bosporan Kingdom is a small kingdom on the northern shores of the Black Sea. They are basically Greek settlers who settled the area and uh, then have formed over time into a small kingdom. Um, they're very very special start and many options of expansion. Uh, they also have their own heritage which is called the Heritage of Spartacus. And uh, the heritage gives uh, the Bosnian Kingdom uh, plus 6% unintegrated culture group happiness. They also give them plus 10% fort defense but the malice within the heritage is that it costs 15% more when you want to increase lit uh, legitimacy uh, through the, I think it's the government tab where you do that. Um, now the Bosman Kingdom, uh, as I said, has many uh, uh, many uh, avenues to expand. You have to be wary of uh, Scythia or Scythia, who lies to the north uh, to the north of you. Now, uh, the Bosporans could expand either into them by getting some kind of small alliance going with some kind with some of the nearby neighbors, or you could also try and ally the Scythians and then use them in your expanding, well, mainly to the to the east or to the west beyond uh, Scythia. You could also, I suppose, sail across the sea and then expand into Anatolia, if that is possible. Um, then you could maybe in time form some kind of great black sea empire where you in encompass the entire sea and uh, maybe beat down on the Didoki uh, successor states as a true Greek warlord. Uh, but the Bosporan Kingdom offers some interesting uh, gameplay and uh, 
many uh, many uh, avenues of expansion. Adiabene. Now, Adiabene is an agent that uh, I am actually running a campaign with at this moment, uh, a let's play, where we have successfully formed Assyria. As, um, as said, uh, Adiabene is one of the few nations that can actually form Assyria, uh, a formable uh, nation in Mesopotamia, well, northern parts of Mesopotamia. It's a bit difficult start because you have to, in my opinion, try to entice nearby uh, governors uh, from the Seleucid Empire. It's, uh, so you have to take your time, pay attention to which provinces that are uh, close to you, uh, that are uh, disloyal, and also try and make the governor disloyal. And you can do that by making friends with the governor and then inspire disloyalty. And then after that, when the, when the province you want to grab <laughs> through diplomatic means is below 50 in loyalty, then you can entice uh, entice the governor and grab that province for yourself. Um, my suggestion would be to wait until a province is close to being disloyal or disloyal and then do the whole f befriending a governor and uh, disparring disloyalty because if you do it too soon and you can't entice the governor the AI might or would probably swap out the governor for a more loyal one. Uh, you can also try as, as we did with Adiabene to form or convert over to the Chaldean faith in instead of being Zoroastrian, which is, um, I guess, more historical accurate to do so. Uh, that's one way of playing them. You can also try and break the tributary status you start as within under uh, the Seleucid Empire and just attack them outright or maybe expand into Armenia. And now, the big letdown of playing Adiabene is that they only have a generic heritage, which is called the Rural Heritage, which is not that bad for the uh, for this nation because it gives minus twenty percent found city cost modifier, which is quite handy. They have uh, minus ten percent military provincial investment cost, which is nice if you want to fortify an area. But the bad thing about this heritage is that it gives a uh, minus 4% national tribesmen happiness. But again, you don't really have any tribesmen and there's not a whole lot of tribesmen in this area at all. So it, it doesn't really affect you at all. So that's nice, I suppose. But um, yeah, if you want to play as a nation that have to tiptoe around the Slukid Empire, at least for the start of the game, Adibene is something I would recommend. Etruria. Now, Etruria is one of Rome's most uh, early uh, rivals, and if you want to play as Etruria, you have to make sure that everything you do at the start is to try and stop Rome. You don't want Rome to snowball across uh, the peninsula, and uh, uh, because before you know it, they will be too large for you to handle on your own. And speaking of being on your own, I would highly recommend as Etruria, as you try and get as many allies as possible, and then with the allies' help, either attack Rome directly, or maybe um, attack them while they're busy in some kind of other war, perhaps with the with the neighbors to the south, uh, the Samniums um, and the Lucanians and such, maybe the Greek cities, or maybe even Carthage. Rome has missions to uh, uh, annex Etruria, um, so you have to be very wary of that. Now, Etruria was one of the places where Rome got a lot of their inspiration from, according to what I know, at least. and. Um, they are relatively powerful, but <laughs> the bad thing for Etruria is they're neighbors to Rome, and in directly in the line of being uh, attacked by the Romans. So you have to make sure you get a good network of friends to help you, and then take down Rome. Once you have taken Rome, uh, it's basically a bit like playing Rome, maybe except with the uniqueness of being Rome, but you could either try and fortify your holdings and maybe focus on Italy itself, or maybe even expand, like Rome did, across the Mediterranean. Now, the Etrurians, uh, they do have their own heritage, Etruscan heritage, which gives 0.02% monthly civilization change. They also have minus 25% cost for found city, which is very handy, especially if you want to civilize and grow large, or more like grow tall. But they have a malice of their military provincial investment cost is 5% more expensive. 
so it's not the worst thing, but still, uh, the found city cost modifier is pretty significant, so that will come in handy. Uh, so basically, as Etruria, get as many as friends as possible to start with, and then, well, gang up on Rome, and then Italy and the Mediterranean should be your oyster. Tartessos. Now, Tartessos is a small nation near the southern coast of Iberia. They are unfortunately directing the line of Carthaginian expansion, so you have to take that into account for whatever you do. I did try to play Tartessos uh, some time ago, uh, it's even on this channel as a let's play, but it all ended with me being annexed by Carthage. Uh, after we expanded into Western Iberia, Portugal and such, we did get a decent size, but uh, in the end uh, Carthage was simply just too much for us. So, as the Tessas, you certainly want to try and get either some kind of large alliance against Carthage, maybe even Rome if possible. Rome might be too large for you to ally though, or also be out of your diplomatic range. Or try and annex as much as possible on Iberia and then try and civilize as fast as possible, so you can get some more technology and more innovations to try and combat the Carthaginian legions slash mercs. Um, now, Tartessos, uh, they're also blessed with their own heritage, which is called the Heritage of Tartessos. Now, that gives export value up by 10%, which is nice, so more income. They also get civic tech investment 10%, so even faster tech, but you, again, you want to try and uh, civilize slash centralize before that really becomes an issue. and. But the malice of being Tartessos with the heritage is that they have a 5% extra building cost, which is not that nice. Uh, of course, as Tartessos, you can try and form Iberia and evict <laughs> all the foreign invaders from Carthage and possibly Rome, uh, the further down the line you go, um, and show who is the master of this peninsula. So, this. Uh, has been and will be uh, an interesting nation to play, and I hope you find it as well. So we are near, nearing the end here, and uh, I want to uh, thank you very much for watching uh, until now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this small uh, video. This is my first attempt at trying to edit uh, a video, um, so it has been a challenge and it has taken a lot of time. So, but of course I can become better at it. It's a learning process. But uh, yeah, I'm also aware that uh, many nations we didn't, I didn't talk about, but these were just five of the interesting nations outside of Rome and the Daidoki. So I hope you got a small inspiration for maybe trying one of them next time. Hope I see you all in the next video, and please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you have enjoyed it. See ya!